Okay, then. Um, here are my uh, concluding thoughts on all of this. Um, our mission today, what we set out to do, was to demonstrate, uh, or to examine the evidence at least, for whether uh, greater diversity and inclusion does indeed help companies attract and retain talent, help them spot new opportunities, and promote innovation and collaboration and creativity and productivity. And we've looked at all of that from lots and lots of different angles. Um, but I think there's been really you know, very compelling evidence from all the people we've, we've heard from that this is true. Um, it's not just something we'd like to be true. It actually is true. Uh, we've heard this from in, in fields from consumer goods to the CIA. Um, and we've also heard from, uh, from Kenji Yoshino right at the beginning of the day, we heard what the, if, given that this is true, um, what do you do about it? And what do you do about it uh, in particular if you're a multinational company and you have to operate in uh, environments that have anti-LGBT uh, legislation? Um, and so we heard about the different scenarios there. Um, we also had repeatedly that companies have um, a special kind of influence. There was a bit of a debate about whether they have more influence than governments. Most people generally thought they did. But I thought um, uh, Chad Griffin's point that, well, they have a different kind of influence to governments. And you know, maybe, and we just heard about sport. That has another kind of influence as well. And actually, we just need to use all of these kinds of influence uh, together. But there is definitely, this is the main thing, these businesses, and businesses is defined broadly to include the MBA and the CIA, um, are, they, are, they definitely have influence. So, um, you know, there is, there is a there there. Um, and of course, you know, as well as looking at all of that, we examined just the state of LGBT inclusion in things like advertising and healthcare and, and sport. I think looking forward, um, a couple of things that stayed with me uh, from, from our speakers earlier on today. Um, uh, we had a prediction that in, uh, in the division, if you divide the countries up into red, green, and yellow, red, yellow, and green um, states, depending on their uh, legislative stance, uh, towards LGBT rights, um, that we can expect progress in the yellow zone countries in particular in the next five years. And I think that's going to be a very interesting thing to watch. And in particular, whether we see leaders in some regions, um, particularly in the global south, so in, but, but in Asia and South America in particular, will we see countries taking a lead there and then influencing other countries within the region? Uh, that was Randy Berry's um, assessment, and that's certainly something to watch out for. And then I also like to remark from Claudia Lopez, who said that democracy means you have to fall in love with gradual gradual change. Um, and we, you know, we're seeing gradual change, but we are seeing change, and it is going um, in the right direction. So um, I think the, uh, the point that I, I uh, probably that neatly summarizes both the, uh, the discussions we've had today, but also why The Economist is interested in this. Uh, I go back to where we started, which was with Kenji. Um, one of the things he said right at the end of the first session today was that this is the social movement to buy stock in, if you imagine it as a business. Uh, and that's bringing together the, you know, the social um, liberalism uh, and the economic liberalism of The Economist. If you imagine this as a, as a startup, um, then uh, you know, this is one that you want to invest in. So that brings us to the end of our, um, of our program today. And it's also the end of our 24-hour marathon that began in, uh, actually it's not quite 24 hours, but, uh, but it, it, uh, um, it's been three different events in Hong Kong, London, and New York today. Um, I would like to thank our stellar lineup of speakers today. I mean, you really couldn't have hoped for a better uh, lineup. They really were spectacular. And I'd also like to thank you, the audience, for your participation. In a lot of these events, um, you get, you know, you don't get many questions, and you don't get much, you don't get much feedback, you don't get much of a sense of engagement. It has been fantastic today how well engaged you have been, how many questions there have been. You know, we've been, we've been told you need to get to the Q&A on time. You need to start the Q&A earlier because we've been running out of time for Q&A on a lot of sessions. That does not often happen. That is really, really uh, good. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your tweets. I'd also like to thank our sponsors. Um, so IBM, AXA, Standard Chartered, McCann, Ogilvy & Mather, Edelman, Accenture, and Biogen. I would like to thank the conferences team who have been working on this for over a year. And I think you'd agree have done an absolutely spectacular job of making everything happened and just run like clockwork. So particular thank you to them. I would like to invite you to complete the uh, evaluation forms, which are no longer pieces of paper, but are now inside the app. But please tell us what you liked and what you didn't like, because I have a funny feeling we're going to be doing this event again. And so we would like your, um, we would like your input on how we might do things differently and uh, you know, uh, what you liked and didn't like about this particular program. Uh, but that's it. And so now please join us uh, for cocktails in the foyer. And thank you all very much for attending. Goodbye. Thank you.